Ah, Half-Life, the game people just don't shut up about. It's got chapters here and there, and if you're watching this video, you're here to see which chapters are the best and which are the worst. Of course, spoilers ahead if you really are that interested in the game, but if you enjoyed this video, hit that little like button with your control bar and maybe consider subscribing. That would make G-Man very happy. Anyway, let's get into it. Starting off at number 18, we have Black Mesa Inbound because... Alright, this is not a bad chapter by any means. Half-Life has no bad chapters. Of course, I'm beyond understanding of what made this opening so cool for 1998, and to me this is still a neat opening. But it is pretty long at the start, and there's nothing going on in terms of gameplay. A cool start, but not a highlight. Number 17, Zen. This is another basic chapter. It's small, but it is interesting. It's the first section of the border world. How can it be bad at all? Don't tell me you're gonna complain about the mucus colored ground. That is just nitpicky. Now the towers, yeah, you can complain about them, they're stupid. Number 16, forget about Freeman. Very short chapter, but this beginning is simply awesome. The HECU guy yelling through the radio as the entire building shakes and collapses. The enemies absolutely everywhere. This is immersive and I won't stand for any opposing forces or opinions. The underground section is pretty cool. Very narrow, not too many enemies. And the ending of this level is definitely a highlight controlling a tank, and then manning the gun to kill a bunch of spawning enemies. <sighs> this part was incredibly painful on my first playthrough. Number 15, On a Rail. I've seen a lot of people claim that this chapter kind of drags, much like the airboard part in Half-Life 2, but this is my opinion, so screw all of those guys. In my opinion, this chapter is awesome. You get to ride around on a cool minecart thing the whole time and there's all sorts of shenanigans. How could you absolutely hate this chapter? Not only that, Gordon gets the show played to the space race, and you can experience the void. I love doing this. If you don't like this chapter, you have a problem. Number 14, Lambda Core. This is one of the longer chapters in the game, and in my opinion, the final test of strength. This is the chapter where you get the gluon gun, which on its own makes this chapter really cool. I also think this chapter is pretty diverse in terms of tasks. Flooding the place with coolant is one of my favorite pastimes. Now let's talk about the portal puzzle. It's really not that hard, but hey, if you're interested in remembering the correct path, it's Portal 2, Portal 4, Portal 7. Remember that and don't forget it, 247. Honestly, the best part of this chapter is the final fight before entering Zen. It's stressful, but it is so much fun. Number 13, Anomalous Materials. Imagine being beat out to an intro chapter. This chapter truly shows the specialty of Half-Life. All the little things to interact with, all the scientists wandering around, all the paths to take. I love this chapter just because of how fun it is to run around in. Not only that, we have the infamous... It's about to go critical. I think this chapter is definitely what made this game so great. Number 12, Gonark's Lair. This is another part of the game people don't like, but why? Is it because of the baby headcrabs? I can see that. Is this boss fight straight up fetish content in a video game? I can't see how it wouldn't be considered that. Huh. Hmm. You know what? After thinking about that... Shut up! This area is really fun to long jump in. Just have fun, damn it! Number 11, Nihilin. This boss fight is super easy, but really fun. A giant flying baby is having a little wham wham meltdown and you gotta make him explode. Do it as fast as possible so you can see a white guy say you earned a cosmic purple heart. Here, I accidentally speed ran this in Half-Life Source. Look. Number 10, Questionable Ethics, aka Anomalous Materials 2. This chapter is overall pretty cool, nothing offensive. It's pretty short, but pretty diverse. Making head wraps and tables explode, shooting a laser into the wall, getting the Tau Cannon, this and that. Just a neat time. Number 9, Apprehension. The final act of the first part of this huge thing. Would you consider this chapter to be a water level? Anyway, a massively flooded part of the facility, home to easily the greatest fish dinner of all time. 
Not only that, you get the crossbow here. Easily the greatest fish dinner acquirer of all time. I personally think the cold freezer part of this chapter is a standout for me. It's really fun to run through as fast as possible. But of course, it's all about the end here. Gordonius experiences reality and pays for it. Number 8, Office Complex. If Half-Life were a TV show, this would easily be Episode 2. I'm honestly confused as to how or why this part of the facility exists considering you have to go through some sewer area to get here. Anyway, this is a pretty diverse chapter. The room full of vorticons, the freezer area, and the somersaulting scientists. For an older man, he's got spring. The latter section, absolutely fun. This whole chapter is honestly just a nice treat. Number 7, Unforeseen Consequences. I actually find it interesting how significant that phrase is in the Half-Life franchise, but I love the dark and chaotic environment of this chapter. Everything's exploding, everyone's dead or hurt, the constant threat of damage, and the overall variety in this chapter is one of the things that made Half-Life so great. The same points I brought up with anomalous materials apply here, but combat is thrown in and there are more paths to take. Not to mention you get every single early game Xenian creature in one. This elevator section, which I did skip, is a standout of this chapter, but skipping it is super fun too. I could play this chapter over and over if I wanted to. Number 6, Residue Processing. Act 2 of the game starts here, and while it's so short, it's so sweet. This is another one of those parts that people don't really like because of the conveyor belt maze. It's really not that bad. To be honest, I like this chapter just because of how fun it is to speedrun. There aren't too many enemies in the way, and it has a lot of different paths and rooms. The swimming bit is incredibly memorable for me, and the whole chapter is just a giant obstacle course. The one thing that's missing is that really cool feature only exclusive to Half-Life Source. <laughs> Number 5, Power Up. I'm curious if this chapter counts as a boss fight considering you can't move on unless you destroy the Gargant first. But I love how this chapter starts, enemies everywhere, the place shaking, not to mention how it combines fighting against Xenians and HECU units, and honestly, combat in this chapter is bliss. Not much to say except this chapter is fantastic and really memorable. Number 4, Surface Tension. This is probably the longest chapter in the game, but it is so diverse! I love how the biggest threats in this chapter are always something that's bigger than you. Every single level is incredibly memorable. The dam is a basic but challenging introduction where moving fast is one of the better options. The outer wall is stealth based and full of collectibles. Just make sure to always check the wall for a path to the next area. And do be careful for the mines at the end. Next is the iconic click level. Next is the iconic click level. Next is the iconic cliff level, which let me explain this. The military is so keen on catching you that they actually set up defenses on the edge of a cliff. Then you go back inside the walls and encounter tanks in a literal battlefield. Then you run around a collapsing building with a minefield around it. Then go inside the building, which is filled with explosives. And then you go around the side of the buildings. Which, by the way, this sound is really satisfying. Then you make your way to an airstrip, blow the door open with whatever this thing is, take down a seemingly endless horde of Vortigons with a machine gun, just saying this section is the only part of the game I don't like. This specific air duct because it's full of Starks and getting through is completely random. Then you go to a car mechanic, blow up the door again, encounter a huge fight between aliens and the military, then you have to infiltrate this building for a security officer, then encounter another Gargant, and play with a technical map to blow up another door and the walls and re-enter the building which is now crumbling around you. Wow. Just wow. This chapter is incredible. Top 3 incoming. Number 3, Interloper. When people hate on Zen, this is probably the part they hate so much. Well, honestly, it's not that bad. Just long jump everywhere. Seriously, look, I'm long jumping all over the place and I'm not having to deal with anything. I'm going fast and I'm having fun. In all seriousness, this is a pretty story revealing chapter with the factory levels, but I love this chapter so much because of just it, how it was designed, okay? I mean, it feels like they didn't really expect you to do all these different skips which make these already easy to bear levels easier to bear, but my other strategy is crossbow, shotgun, magnum. Simple as that, it's not that bad. Number two, we've got hostiles. This is another chapter that's fun to speedrun, especially once you get the hang of the controls and can dodge trip mines and turrets with ease. Not only that, this chapter has my favorite line in the entire game. Oh my god, we're doing it. 
The music also perfectly matches with the exhilaration I get from getting through here as fast as possible. There's diverging paths here and there, but for the most part it's running fast and firing. WM1 was invented here, and don't you forget it. And number one, Blast Pit. This is the first boss fight in the game, and this is the chapter I think about when I think of Half-Life. It starts off with a nice elevator and a roller coaster ride, and I even sniped the bull squid with a grenade here. But anyway, I love the idea of having to use grenades to make things as easy as possible. You have the giant fan section, the weird machine section, and having the entire chapter revolve around the middle area is just incredibly fun. Even the pipe sections are fun to run around on. This is easily the most fun part of Half-Life for me. And there you have it, my ranking for every chapter in Half-Life. With all that said and done, let me know what your favorite chapter in Half-Life is, and I hope you all have an extraordinary rest of your day. Be safe in the test chamber, society cannot survive another Resonance Cascade.